This man is eavesdropping. His wife was having an intense affair with another man in the next room, and he's being cuckolded with a strange kind of pleasure. The story begins with the beautiful girl Marie. Marie grew up in a wealthy family in France. She and her two sisters were very beautiful, but in French society at the time, daughters grew up to be mere commodities to be married. Marie was curious about the poet Pierre, and in the course of their encounters, Pierre fell in love with the girl who was like a daffodil, but his best friend Henri also fell in love with Marie, so he took advantage of Pierre's absence. He took the check and went to Marie's house. Marie's parents had planned to marry her sister to him. Even her sister was ready to get married. Seeing Henry's sincerity, and their family really needed the money, Marie's parents didn't hesitate to set their marriage in motion. Despite Marie's internal rejection, she couldn't resist the marriage arrangements of the times, but Henri was true to Marie. He even betrayed his best friend Pierre. Pierre was furious at the news. He asked Henri why he did it, but Henri thought it was only fair play. Pierre left the city in a fit of anger. Two years later, Pierre returned. He was accompanied by a beautiful woman, Zora. Pierre was no longer a poet. He chose to show his art through photography. In the 18th century, bold and sensual photographs of nude women became fashionable. Photographers elevated eroticism to the level of truth and beauty. Pierre also turned his camera on beautiful, generous girls. Zora was a very bold girl. She always showed her true self on camera, and Pierre was in charge of capturing this sexy and free scene for his art collection. Marie was thrilled to hear that Pierre had returned. She knocked on Pierre's door, but she was greeted by Zora. The sight of Zora filled Marie with jealousy. Despite their long separation, Marie was still in love with Pierre. When they looked at each other, they felt their love for each other. Then they had sex without any principles. Since she had sex with Pierre this time, Marie was a different person. From being depressed, she became passionate. She often sat alone in a corner, while reading Pierre's letters. While remembering their lovemaking that day, Marie felt that only Pierre could read her heart and he was the only one who could bring her happiness. She felt that her marriage to Henri had tied her down, and Pierre's presence was a relief. So Marie became obsessed. Marie asked Pierre to take a special photo of her. In the photographs, Marie was constantly changing her position, from the fully clothed to the naked to the passionate love between them. All of them were kept in Pierre's camera and turned into black and white photos. Marie was very pleased with the photos. Pierre was thrilled to admire his work, although the relationship between the two of them was unethical. But they still thought, that it was full of love and art. And so their affairs became more and more daring. One day Pierre came to Henry's house. Pierre pretended to be unfamiliar with Marie. But under Henry's nose, Marie exchanged glances with Pierre. Pierre even deliberately mentioned his photography. Marie remembered the photos she had taken before. Marie made an excuse for Henri to get their wedding photos. Then she turned around and had a passionate tongue kiss with Pierre, even if it was only for a minute. The two of them were psychologically satisfied. Then Henry picked up the wedding photos. All the people in the photo were smiling. Marie was the only one who didn't look at all. You can see that Marie was very reluctant to get married. Marie could never love Henry. While looking at the photo, Pierre's hand is gently stroking Marie's finger. Henry, who was sitting on the other side of the table, didn't even know it. After these physical encounters, Marie was completely free. She was already a woman with a passion for art and poetry. Now Marie didn't want to be tied down in her marriage. She found Pierre more and more often. Every time she was alone with him, Marie felt that this was the most real version of herself. Of course, Pierre was happy to accept Marie who came to his room, and every time Marie came, Pierre would record everything that happened between them. But what Marie didn't know was, Pierre was actually a master photographer. He loved to collect photos of beautiful women. That day when Marie had just left Pierre's house, Pierre met a young girl selling goods downstairs. Her looks were to Pierre's liking, so he persuaded her to come to his room. Under Pierre's guidance, the young girl took off her clothes and posed for Pierre to take pictures of her. Of course, Pierre's desires went beyond a young girl. His room was frequented by all kinds of women, whether it was a little girl selling something, or a woman he met at an intersection. They all gave him the urge to take pictures and have sex with them, and Pierre is happy to share them. At least his friend Henry had seen some of them. Henry thought Pierre was outrageous, but the outrageousness was just beginning. That day Pierre went to meet his lover Zora. The two of them were in the throes of an unspeakable affair. But then Marie arrived at Pierre's house out of the blue. Marie was curious about the master artist so she broke into his secret room. But Marie was shocked by what she saw, a half-naked Zora moving between Pierre and his friends. Zora was both sexy and bold. Marie didn't even think she was a match for Zora. Despite discovering Pierre's secret, Marie wasn't angry. Rather, she thought it might be the artist's personality. She was just jealous that Zora was more attractive. At the ball soon after, Pierre brought Zora to the ball. Marie was devastated. She tried to escape, but her husband Henry stopped her. Marie's unusual behavior aroused Henry's suspicions. When they got home, Henry brushed Marie's hair. But after seeing the look on Marie's face, he left the room in silence. 
When Henry opened Marie's drawer and saw the naked photos and the love letters, Henry was devastated. Even though he was deeply in love with Marie, he couldn't stand Marie's affair with Pierre. But Henry chose to pretend he didn't know, because he knew he couldn't live without Marie. The affair between Marie and Pierre continued, but as their interactions deepened, Marie became more and more possessive. One day Marie broke down in tears. She told Pierre she couldn't accept sharing a man with Zora. Marie was even more reluctant to let Zora take away Pierre's affection. To spare Marie's heartache, Pierre decided to cut his love. He offered Zora money to leave the city. Zora begged and pleaded, but Pierre wouldn't budge. When Zora became disillusioned and was ready to leave, she didn't expect Marie to come to her. Instead of a fight between the two rivals, an ambiguous atmosphere develops. This is where the story begins to get dramatic. Marie understands how hard it is for a woman to live alone, so she offered to rent a room for Zora. She was willing to take her in for a while, but what Marie didn't expect, Zora had awakened her by sexual tendencies. As Zora's hands ran over Marie's body, Marie felt a thrill she had never felt before. The two women began a physical confrontation. Since Zora left, Pierre was completely devoted to Marie. Marie was more satisfied than she'd ever been. She even felt that this was what she longed for. No worries. No depression. Only pure joy. As he watched his wife sink lower and lower, Henry realized he had to do something. Because Marie and Pierre weren't just a game. It was love beyond his expectations. Henry knew he couldn't convince his wife to come back. So he decided to solve the problem with Pierre. He tried to use their friendship to convince Pierre. They both knew the problems they had with each other. Pierre felt guilty for sleeping with Henry's wife. So when Henry suggested he go to another city, Pierre accepted without hesitation. Marie, however, was obsessed with Pierre. Until one day she received a letter from Pierre. In it, Pierre told Marie that by the time she read the letter, he had already left for another city. Marie was shocked. The love of her life, the man of her life, had left without saying goodbye. Pierre's departure hurt Marie almost more than she could bear. Since Pierre's departure, Marie had fallen ill. She missed Pierre's warmth. But she didn't know if he would ever come back. The loss of her beloved was almost unbearable. It was as if Pierre had taken her soul. Even the presence of her sister and her mother couldn't dispel the darkness in her life. Her mother told Henry. Marie was the most artistic and sentimental of her daughters. So she had to be very attentive when she was with her. It would be best if she could go out and see the world. That might distract her completely. But Henry had no intention of making Marie happy. For Marie, Henry was possessive. As long as Marie stays by his side. Whether she was sick or healthy. Happy or depressed, Henry didn't care. But what Henry didn't realize, that in addition to Pierre, Marie was having a new affair. A few months later, Marie finally got her act together. She wore a bright red dress and went to the newly opened museum to see the artifacts, where, in addition to the beautiful and unique artifacts, and the owner of the museum, although Marie didn't like the owner very much, but she enjoyed the sensation of being cheated on. So not only did Marie become the owner's mistress, Marie was taken to Pierre's former home, where Marie mimicked Pierre's moves. She left an explicit photo with this man. In Marie's mind, it was as if she had returned to the days when she lived with Pierre. Taking racy photos was a way for Marie to commemorate the occasion, but she never expected Pierre to return. He found the photos Marie had left behind. Pierre was convinced that Marie had betrayed him. But when Marie prayed to him at the door, Pierre's heart softened. But Pierre's heart was filled with anxiety. He could no longer make photographs to his own satisfaction. It was Marie's betrayal that drained Pierre of inspiration. It was then that Henry announced the good news. Marie was pregnant. They were expecting a new baby. The news sent a thrill through Pierre's heart. He knew the baby could be his. A letter from Marie confirmed his suspicions. The child was indeed Pierre's. Henry knew the truth, but he didn't care. He loved Marie, and he loved the child she gave birth to. Henry named the baby Pierre to welcome little Pierre. Pierre decided to take a picture of them. It was a new beginning, a family moment that would last forever. When the photos were ready, Henry approached Pierre. He asked him if he looked like a cuckolded fool. That's all. Pierre could only apologize. He was grateful for Henry's generosity, mainly because his love for Marie was so overwhelming. Pierre didn't expect that Henry not only didn't get angry. Instead, he made a surprising request. Henry said he enjoyed being cuckolded. To fulfill Henry's wish, Pierre took Marie to the hotel that afternoon. Henry was put in the next room. When Marie arrived at the hotel, the two started their passion again. The fire of desire felt like it was going to burn up the whole room, and Henry was listening like a gecko in the next room. Marie's voice was so strange and fascinating to him. Henry could even imagine the look on her face, even though he wasn't the main character. And in any case, Henry didn't want to end the relationship with Marie. He didn't want to divorce Marie even if she only had Pierre in her heart. Henry pretended not to know about Marie's affair with Pierre. Soon after, Marie's family went bankrupt. The news reached Henry. He graciously took Marie's mother and sister into his home. Marie's mother told him that the family was short of money. Marie's sister was desperate to get married. 
She had Pierre in mind, who had recently risen to prominence, but she had no dowry. It seemed unrealistic to marry Pierre. Marie remembered her mother's words. She asked Pierre to meet her at the hotel the next day. But when Pierre opened the door, he saw Marie's sister. Pierre, the prodigal son, never turned down a woman, so he slept with Marie's sister. But when Pierre met Marie again, he said bluntly that he didn't want to get married and have children, and he didn't want to be bound by it. Besides, Marie was the only one he ever wanted. Despite Pierre's firm refusal, Marie wasn't ready to let go. She lobbied Pierre for a promise, that if Pierre married his sister, that they would both serve him. Marie's words moved Pierre. He couldn't help but admit that he dreamed of this life for a long time, but he didn't realize Marie's love was so deep. She was even willing to share Pierre with another woman. Soon Marie's sister became Pierre's bride. Under Marie's tutelage, her sister became an accessory to their lovemaking. To the casual observer, incest was taboo. But in the eyes of the artist, each picture was a priceless treasure. Marie thought that the marvelous relationship between these three would last forever. But then Pierre's health took a turn for the worse. Pierre's eyesight was impaired by the long hours of shooting. Despite his cutting-edge treatments, Pierre's world remained a blur. He was even told it would be forever. But fortunately, his wife and lover remained close by. During the days spent with Pierre and his sister, Marie gained a deeper understanding of their entanglements and emotions. In order to remember this outrageous love, she decided to disguise herself as a man and put the story into words, word for word. Her book was bold and daring. When it hit the shelves, it quickly created an uproar among readers. Everyone thought the author behind the book was a bearded old man. Who would have thought that this kind of erotic novel with a male protagonist? That the author was a tender young woman. Even the head editor of the publishing house was impressed by Marie's talent. He even wanted to have an affair with her. But Marie refused. Because she was not an indulgent woman, she simply chose to take an uninhibited joy ride in her short life. As she says in her book, the pure pleasures of life are fleeting. Few people get to pick and choose the life they want. Fewer still experience the pure joy of life. Marie and Pierre are certainly among the best. In the name of love, collecting intimate photos of women of all kinds like stamps, compared to Pierre, Marie's love was more courageous and innocent. She only had Pierre in her heart. She's willing to do everything for him. What's even more shocking than the plot of this movie is that the story is based on real photos and letters which means that everything that's being told actually happened. 